Well, good evening and welcome to Pastor on the Porch this evening. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, the made-up holiday that the U.S. has done for profit and for marketing schemes. But that's for another episode or a different show this evening than this evening. Uh, tonight... I, as I was looking back over many of the episodes that I have taped over the last year or so, realized that, particularly in the last few, I don't introduce myself. So, I want to introduce myself. I want to reacquaint myself with the uh, viewing audience, and I want to kind of give you uh, an idea what this is all about again. So. My name is the Reverend Joel Bartz. I serve Level Cross United Methodist Church and Mount Lebanon United Methodist Church in the small town or medium-sized town or villages of Randleman and Level Cross, North Carolina. I come to you live each Wednesday at 7 p.m.-ish uh, from the porch of the parsonage. Uh, Kind of a, and what this time is, is a kind of, or a very informal time of devotion and a time of worship and a time of togetherness for us as a community and us as a family of God to come together midweek as we aren't able to come together physically as much right now, although that is going to be changing in the future. There's works in there's uh, cogs in the works for getting back together a little bit more. Um, however, that might be fall before everything is put into place, so to speak. Um, but I am a uh, the pastor here, like I said, at Level Cross United Methodist Church and Mount Lebanon United Methodist Church. And I love this time where it is very informal and I can just sit out here on the porch, watch the cars go by. You will occasionally see my ADD mind go afloat when a car does go by, particularly if it is particularly flashy, loud, or obnoxious. So um, there's that. But also this started as a kind of a launch of a few pastor friends of mine and we were doing them each night of the week, but with some changes in appointments and some changes in work schedules and some changes in kids' schedules, the others weren't able to continue. Uh, but I got such positive feedback of this time that we share together here on Facebook and on YouTube that um, I wanted to continue it going. So even during the winter months, when I was out here with my propane heater and bundled up in two or three layers, or in the summer months when I've got my fan going the, off the, uh, or behind the camera, we, there's a worship scheduling conflict, or there is a scheduling conflict with uh, something I have going on or the family has going on. So, with that out of the way, with that down, let us go into our devotion tonight. It comes from Jesus Calling, which is something that I've kind of been drawn to a lot lately. And it reads tonight, Come to me for all that you need. Come into my presence with thanksgiving for thankfulness opens the door of my treasures when you are thankful you affirm the central truth that I am good I am light in whom there is no darkness at all the assurance that I am entirely good meets your basic need for security your life is not subject to the whims of a sin stained deity Relax in the knowledge 
that the one who controls your life is totally trustworthy. Come to me with confident expectation. There is nothing you need. Amen? Friends, there's a word in there. I'm doing my Lecto Divina kind of looking at that. And there's a word that stands out in there. And that's need. Need. It doesn't say God will provide everything you want. It doesn't say God will provide everything that you think you need. It doesn't say that God will provide all the luxuries. Instead, it says, God will provide all that you need. Need. So what is it that we need? What is it that we need? And why do we think, why do we think we need more than we do? That's a hard question to ask of yourself, of myself. Why do I think I need more than I do? You know, I've got a roof over my head. I've got clothes on my body. Anybody that's seen me lately knows that I'm eating pretty well. And anybody that's driven, driven by or walked by the parsonage lately knows that from the smell of the grills that there's food in the parsonage and we're being provided for here. We're eating well. We're clothed well. Well, some days I wonder about Jeremiah's choice of wardrobe, but <coughs> that's a choice, not a... He's got clothes that match. But in each thing that we do, in each thing that we explore, in each thing that we, as people, as human beings on this earth, we have to judge. We have to make the educated appointment of need or want. Or think we need or want. You know, many of us, me included, are enamored by the new car models that come out. I'm always on social media and on the internet looking at what the next latest, greatest thing to come out, whether it be from a mainline car company or an import or is it electric or I've been hooked on, for many of you that know me well, I've been hooked on Jeeps lately for a while and they just released the hybrid Jeep Wrangler which tickles my fancy a little bit. But I've got a perfectly good car. Why do I think that I want that? car gets me from A to B. That is so much more than so many others in this world have. And yet, in my mind, I think that I need new. I need the latest. I need the greatest. I need the newest technology. I'm guilty of that in so many ways. My phone, the iPad, the MacBook, watch. I'm guilty about thinking that I need the newest, latest, and greatest technology. Truth is, I can survive on much less. I can survive with no technology, for that matter. But it has been instilled in our society since I would say 
probably the 50s and the Leave it to Beaver age that we've got to keep up with our next door neighbor. We've got to keep up with the Joneses per se. We've got to maintain a lifestyle that is of the society. Well, we don't have to maintain that lifestyle. We choose to maintain that lifestyle. We choose to work ourselves to death in order to afford these things. They call them the finer things in life, but some a lot of times I think they are not a, they are not that fine because they cause us to stress, they cause us anxiety, they cause us pain, they cause us suffering, and oftentimes even cause relationship issues. Instead, if we stepped back, if we stepped back and looked at what we presently have, we have more than what we need. My pantry's full, my freezer's full. I'm not worried about where the next meal is coming from. My freezer has enough meals for probably three months in it right now. But we as a society still want more. We as a society think that we have to do more. We as a society think that we have to conquer more. Listen to these words. Come to me for all you need. Your thanksgiving, thank, your thankfulness opens the door to my treasures. Relax in the is totally trustworthy. Come to me with confident expectation. Now each of those me's, that's Jesus, that's the Lord. It's saying come to the Lord. Come to Christ. Come to Jesus. Come to the Spirit. Fill in that word that you want it to say so it makes you feel right. But in each of that, also know that when you come to Jesus, when you give all to Jesus, when you fully Jesus will provide. Now, I'm still looking for the scripture that says Jesus will provide the million dollar mansion. If you find it, let me know. Instead, the scripture says, I will provide your needs. I'm paraphrasing. Your needs will be cared for. Needs. N-E-E-D-S. So what happens when we mix up our needs and our wants? What happens when we mix up our needs and thinks we needs? That's when we're letting society rule our life. That's when we're not giving it all to Jesus. We're not dependent on Jesus. Instead, we're dependent on ourselves, and we're dependent on our work and we're dependent on making sure the bills are paid instead of being dependent on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but years and years of society teaching us this it's hard to unteach. So when you look and when you feel and when you open your mind up 
to thinking in a way that is of Christ instead of about Christ. That is of the Lord instead of about society. That is of the Lord instead of of society. Your mindset begins to change. Your thought processes begin to change. Your thoughts on what is needed versus what is wanted versus what you think you need really begins to change. And I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't partake in the finer things in life. I do. I have a lot that I don't need that I'm allotted because of where how I live. I have a lot that I think I need that I purchase but I don't need. And we all have those things called hobbies. And they're good for you. Good for your mental health, since this is Mental Health Awareness Month. But remember, when you're contemplating some of those things that maybe you think about doing, And you wonder why it's not happening. It's because you don't really need it. God says it's not quite time right now. And that's what I keep hearing with my Jeep. Is God telling me it's not time right now. The one that I wanted came in and left the dealership before I could even hardly see it. But that's okay. If that one isn't for me, it's because I'm, it's not the right time right now. And yes, I'm using a very, very, very tactile and first world and societal thing to talk of it through. But it's called, it's context. When Jesus preached in the parables, he preached in context. So talking about the purchasing of a new car contextually makes sense. At least it does in my mind. It may not in all minds. But the bigger lesson here is The Lord will provide what is needed. The Lord will provide what you need to survive. The Lord will provide in ways you won't even realize. I've experienced those moments in my life in the past when I was very ill. The Lord provided through people, through groups, through friends. The Lord provided when I could not. So know that no matter what, the Lord continues to provide even when we try to screw it up on multiple occasions. It's called forgiveness, friends. And when we have that, thanks to the resurrected Son, we are set apart from others. We are given an opportunity to love in a way that is unmeasurable. We are given the opportunity to find life in things that are lifeless. But most of all, we are given the opportunity to believe in Christ to love Christ, to love like Christ and show this world 
this broken down societal run world, societal thinking run world, what we can actually do. What actually happens when we think about and we believe in and we trust in a power higher than anything on this earth? Love that power and love like that power all the days of your life. Amen? Amen. Couple of prayer announcements before we uh, go this week. Uh, first is from Level Cross, Miss Barbara Jackson is having a procedure done tomorrow. I'm not sure the exact time. She just let me know that she was going to have a uh, procedure done to uh, go in from a prior procedure and have some uh, things taken care of. And if I could find it on here, there it is. looking for is not on there so let me see if I can get it on this uh, try a different app up here shortly I hope Hang tight with me. I'm trying to get this thing to well, maybe a minute. It's only in March or April. But, uh, and then, uh, hold on. I might have a better way to get this. Sorry about this. Um, uh, I want to get the name right. There's another surgery going on tomorrow that I was informed about, so I wanted to get it right. Uh, it is Kathy Atkins is having surgery tomorrow. Uh, she's having open heart surgery, and Gloria Yarborough had cataract surgery yesterday, so please be in prayer for her recovery um, of that. And uh, continued prayers for um, all those on our prayer list. I will send that prayer list out again. I send it out every week um, to our email subscribers. If you'd like to be put on my email list, please let me know via this uh, app or through uh, Facebook Messenger or through uh, whatever means you have to get in touch with me. Uh, you can also text me or uh, email me at the church. My email is jbartz, B-A-R-T-Z, at wncc.umc.net. Or you can just call me or whatever. But let me know about if you're not getting the um, email blast and you would like to. So let us go to our Lord in prayer. Lord, tonight we gather here. We gather here in your creation. While we hear the birds singing, flying by, we hear the wind blowing through the trees. Your creation is among us. You have provided everything, those birds, those plants, those creatures need. Allow us to see what we need is different from what we want. 
allow us to see what we think we need is different from what you think we need. Allow our paths to be generated by you. May we follow the path. May we listen to the path. May we listen to the direction that is given by you each and every day in order to enhance your creation in our bodies, in order to enhance your being in our bodies, and in order to enhance your presence in our bodies. We ask this while we ask for prayer for our, our sisters and our brothers who are going through procedures today, tomorrow, or have gone through this week. Be with them, be with the nurses, be with the caretakers as they recover from whatever it is that they are suffering from. The suffering is only temporary on this earth, Lord. We know this. For when we are with you in eternal life, all things will be fulfilled. We'll be with all those that grieve. Grieve the loss of loved ones, grieve the loss of friends, grieve the loud That, Lord, is some of the hardest time in our life here on this earth. Be with them. Give them a wave of compassion. Give them the wind of compassion. Give them the wind of your spirit to let them know that you are with them during this time. Whether it be last week, last month, or last year, Lord, we know that grief doesn't take a break. So be with each and every one that grieves in some way, shape, or form today, tomorrow, or beyond. We ask this in your son's holy and precious and resurrected name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, dodge the raindrops. Stay dry stay underneath the umbrella of Jesus today and every day. I love you all. Amen.